Hi traders and welcome to the technical analysis market wrap on Friday the 5th of July. So we've got a very quiet week in terms of uh, the 4th of July weekend in the US and of course non-farm payroll but we have seen our fair share of action so we'll jump straight into the charts and see if we can identify any trades for today or early into next week. All right, so we'll start out here with the Aussie USD. And we can see that we finally saw that breakthrough that we were talking about actually during the week at the webinar. We can see that the the peppering of the resistance zone at around that sort of 66.80 was uh, very, very heavy. As you can see right through here, we've got a lot of price action over the last month and a half. And finally, we saw that breakthrough. We can see the 20 moving average was pulling it up and actually really pushing and putting pressure on that resistance. And we did finally get through. So really, really good sign for this now. Oh, the dollar index is looking a little bit weaker. We'll have a look at that a little bit later on. But as we can see now, we've finally got that break. You could make an, an argument for a, an ascending triangle here as well. Um, but really, all in all, price is telling us everything that we need to know it was testing a very heavy resistance level that did finally break through. So good signs for it. Now that it's broken past these previous highs, we could probably look to push on to around that sort of 68 cent mark. If we move out a little bit, you can see the the real resistance is um, at around well basically around that 6880 area, uh, which is where the previous uh, peak was um, in most recent trading. But yeah, but that was still a while ago, right? That was basically December of 23. So there's still quite a bit to go before we find any real resistance. But you can see that it got up there very quickly and came down very quickly. We've had a lot of pit stops. So realistically, if we can maintain this momentum and really stay above the moving average with higher, high, high low sequences, really um, yeah, solid chance that the momentum will carry it through to the previous high. So good trading on the Aussie. I wouldn't be looking at any uh, shorting opportunities here, but... If it did pull back and found support at the 20 moving average and above that 66.80, that would be a different story. That could be a good launching pad for another long uh, move, but that would be ideal. I wouldn't be looking for anything short unless we're actually trading below the 20 moving average with a daily candle. So we need a daily close below to make that happen. All right, we'll move over to the US dollar CAD. So we've done the direct opposite here, really. You can see that we've obviously sold off from uh, what was uh, proving to be resistance. Like I said last week, when we're failing to make a previous highs um, level or even higher than that, it's always a sign of yeah, potential weakness coming in. And it certainly did that uh, this week. Once it started trading below those moving averages and around that level, uh, we were in a little bit of trouble. It's at the support zone now, though. Look, around that sort of 136.20 area, uh, it's pretty strong support. You can see... It's actually a role reversal as well. We've got resistance uh, through here um, and obviously at this point here, and we found support here twice uh, yeah, previously just in the last couple of months. So it's no real surprise that it's probably going to land here. Whether it goes through or not, um, you know, that's going to, well, we'll soon find out. But look, the 20 and the 50 moving average are about to cross. I would probably expect that we'd find some sort of um, support here. If we do get that and we see a bit of stabilization around this price level, then we can look at probably scalping opportunities back up to the moving average long. Um, that would be the ideal trade. Keep the trades relatively short and sharp on that one. But if we get a daily close below that 136, uh, then we're going to start targeting uh, quite a bit lower uh, next week. That's um, yeah on the agenda for uh, a move potentially down to the one yeah 34.50 to 135. So decent moves down if we get a daily close um below that 136 uh, a priority uh, but first of all let's see if the support holds and if it does we can probably look for uh little scalping moves back up to the 20 moving average uh and then we'll see what happens there it needs to break above the 20 moving average before we start to get really bullish on this one all right move over to the us dollar yen now uh look this has been very very strong we know that nothing's really changed here we see a little bit of a pullback, but a very, very minor one. Uh, my thoughts on this one haven't really changed since last week. We're in a very precarious zone now where, yeah, going long is fraught with danger because we could pull back very, very sharply and it could take our stop losses. And also, yeah, shorting it can be quite dangerous as well because this has gone up on, you know, things that aren't just technical. We know this, right? So we've got to be very, very careful here. In my mind, the ideal trade is for a, um, a bit more weakness to come in and probably touch the 20 moving average uh, especially if it's around that sort of 160 where we think we saw that previous peak. Uh, if we get down there and the 20 moving average is still there, there's a reasonable case to be made for a long uh, from that point. 
but you'd need to be waiting for a series of higher highs and higher lows on a smaller time frame, of course, to show that the momentum has shifted and that level is going to um, have a good chance of holding. So this would be the ideal trade at around that 160. And if we get that, uh, we can look for the previous high around that sort of 161, 50 area uh, as our main target. Uh, but that would be a, a scalping opportunity as well. I'd be keeping the trades relatively short on this one, probably not looking for long-term moves just yet until we get some clarity as to where it is really going to go. Just be mindful that it is a precarious zone now. All right, over to the dollar index. And uh, look, we saw the weakness that uh, we basically kind of anticipated if we saw a, a few days of um, you know basic, basic weakness and drop-off from last week, which it did do. Once we saw that, uh, but basically once we broke past the 20 moving average, I knew we were in trouble here. So, um, and even though that was relatively low at around that sort of 105.50, you know, it really made its way down to this point pretty quickly, which of course is a, a very positive thing for the euro and the other dollar-based pairs. Uh, so realistically, what we're looking for here now, uh, this is very heavy, heavy support at the 105, okay? So as strong as the 104 support is, which we know is very strong, the 105 is equally as strong. So we've got very heavy resistance, as you can see, the two peaks there and also another two peaks there. And we've got strong support here as well. So it is definitely do or die time for the dollar index. If we get a daily close below the 105, um, we could probably count on you know seeing a weakening market again uh, next week in terms of dollar strength. And that's going to bode well for us, um, a euro move up and potentially continue that Aussie USD move longer as well. So really, this is a very, very key zone for it. Remember, it's very, very important to remember that we are in non-farm payroll week and it is a 4th of July holiday in the US. So yeah, quite often when you have a, a public holiday on a Thursday, the Friday is a very, very light day as well. A lot of people just take the day off. So you could probably expect a really minor um, you know, liquidity in that sort of period. So just be you know mindful of that as well. The end of this week is going to be a funny one. I wouldn't be pay placing any you know, big, long sustained trades probably until Monday till all the noise is out of the way. And we're starting to see that liquidity return. But we are definitely at a level of support here. Uh, there's no question about that. If it breaks through here easily without giving any support whatsoever, uh, that is a very, very bad sign for the dollar index for next week. So look for potential support here. And if we see a bit of a long, then maybe we look at shorting the euro just as a scalping um, opportunity. But we'll move on to the euro now. And as you can see, it's obviously in the inverse of what the dollar index has done. Straight up, it found really good support here. Uh, then we started to see a higher, higher, higher low sequence on the smaller time frames. If you go to the smaller time frames, you'll see them play out pretty nicely. As you can see, all the higher, higher, higher lows were kicking in, 20 moving average pullbacks, and off it went. So really, really easy trading once you know the momentum has shifted. So Euro has done that for us. We find ourselves at a point of resistance as well, but that's also you know, the support of the dollar index that we just talked about. So we know it's pretty heavy here. So just be uh, mindful of that. If you've taken a long, I mean, this is the area that you would have been taking profit anyway. The 108 would have been the target. That's what we talked about when we saw the support starting to uh, kick in around this level here. So hopefully you're able to get hold of that. I know some of you have, uh, which is great. So really just wait and see now. If we find um, that support on the dollar index, this is probably going to roll over a little bit. But if it only pulls back to the 20 moving average uh, or around this level here, which is only a, a minor pullback on, uh, yeah, it's a pretty small uh, pullback zone, really, we could see a case for breaking this level and pushing on to the 108.50 early next week. So keep an eye on that. But yeah, reasonable chance that um, we're going to see yeah, a bit of, um, you know, action here, whether it's actually to the downside or to the upside, more than likely the resistance will hold here for a little bit, given the dollar strength at the 105. All right. And then onto the um, the all important S&P 500. Look, this has been a very quiet week for it. You can see we, we moved up, uh, made a new high, but obviously the day off yesterday completely uh, closed off uh, zero trading. You can see basically there's no movement at all. Um, Non-farm payroll will kick in tonight. We'll see where the uh, law of the land lays. Uh, after the result, of course, but I wouldn't be doing anything until Monday, really. I'd, I'd let the market settle down. We know we're probably going to have pretty light liquidity, so just be really, really mindful of that. Higher high made, no question, but yeah, on very, very um, you know, light uh, movement this week. So just be let not non-farm payroll play out, I think, is the best uh, course of action for this one. And then we'll look at it with a fresh set of eyes on Monday next week where we're either breaking to new highs again, at which point we're just waiting for a bit of a pullback to test that zone, or we roll over. And if we roll over, the 20 moving average is going to be that first target. So hope you had a great week's trading. It's been a, an interesting week, uh, but a, a quiet week in, in a sense. 
So we'll see what non-farm payroll gives us and hopefully we'll get some good opportunities for some breakout trends early next week. Have a great weekend, everyone.